well okay hello everyone so uh, in the last class of chemistry a2 we studied about uh, we studied a little about lattice energy today we will be finishing the entire chapter okay uh, okay let's go so lattice energy so first of all we have to define all the terms in the lattice energy you know that look first uh, here we have um, atomization enthalpy, ionization, electron affinity, lattice energy, hydration and solution enthalpy. Okay. So, the definitions are already given here. So, I would suggest you to write down the definitions from here as a note and go for and uh, memorize the formal definitions from the book. Okay. Uh, I will be showing you a summary of the whole definition, but first of all you need to know the atomization enthalpy. So, what is, at, uh, what is atomization enthalpy? Uh, look, atomization enthalpy is the energy needed to produce one mole of gaseous atoms. So, when you are producing one mole of gaseous atoms, the amount of energy that you have to spend it will be known as the atomization enthalpy okay okay so next what we have here look so uh, here you already have the gaseous atoms produced already isn't it okay so the gaseous atoms are produced so uh, let me zoom out a little. So, when you are uh, converting a gaseous atom into positive ions, that means since you are forming positive ions, so you must be taking out electrons from the gaseous atom, is not it? So, uh, the amount of energy that you have to spend here will be known as the ionization enthalpy or ionization energy. Okay? So, when we, you are talking about ionization energy, you have to take out electrons. Okay? Now, the opposite term is the electron affinity. So, look from gaseous atoms here we have got a negative ion all right so negative ion means this gaseous ion must have gained electrons okay so the amount of energy uh, so the amount of energy changes when a gaseous atom gains an electron the amount of energy changes we call it electron affinity okay here we have something more important to know uh, like uh, ionization energy and electron affinity, they can be of various types. For example, uh, for example, when you when you are forming, okay, let me change the color. So when you are forming from A to A plus, that means you have taken out one electron. That means you are forming from 0 to plus 1. This is called the first ionization energy. Okay? And when from A you are forming A plus 2 or A2 plus, this is what we are calling it as the second ionization energy. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, so, again, if you are forming from A, that means A0 to A plus, that means you are losing one electron. The, this is what we call the first ionization energy. And when you are forming from A plus to A plus 2, that means you are losing another electron. So, this is what we will be calling it as the second ionization energy. Okay? So, similarly, when you are forming, when you are uh, calling or you are talking about ionization energy, at that time, you have to form A3 plus, you have to form A3 plus from what? A2 plus or A plus 2. 
So, this is what we call the third ionization energy. Okay. So, when you are form sorry, sorry, sorry. So, when you are forming A 3 plus from A from uh, A for example, then you have to convert A to A plus, then A plus to A 2 plus, then 2 plus to 3 plus. So, we have to go through three steps that means this is the first ionization energy, this is the second ionization energy and this is the third ionization energy. So, when you are forming A 3 plus from A that means the total energy change, the total energy change for total energy change from A to A 3 plus or plus 3 is the sum of uh, is the sum of uh, first ionization energy and plus the second ionization energy and plus the third ionization energy all right okay so again when you were talking about uh, nth ionization energy wait let me go to airplane mode so when you are talking about nth ionization energy you must form a plus n from one less charge okay n minus 1 so here we have plus n and here we have plus n minus 1 okay same thing goes for the electron affinity like when uh, you are forming b minus from b or b0 the energy change we, we, we would call is the electron affinity first or the first electron affinity and when you are forming from um, when then you are forming b2 minus from b we would call it the second electron affinity 2 minus is formed from 1 minus so again the final product will have one value more and the uh, reactant will have one value less just like the ionization energy so when you are talking about say for example the 10th electron affinity although it's not possible but still i'm saying the 10th electron affinity so you have to form b minus 10 from b minus 9 the product should have one value more the reactant should have one value less okay okay so ionization energy ionization energy is the energy changes when uh, gaseous atoms form gaseous positive ions and electron affinity is the energy change when uh, gaseous atoms form gaseous negative ions okay now what is lattice energy so when the negative ion and the positive ion they combine together to form one mole of ionic solid the amount of energy that is changed is what we call the uh, lattice enthalpy okay lattice enthalpy okay then what is solution enthalpy solution enthalpy is the uh, you just look at the change over here okay so what is the change that is going on here ionic solid look at the solid is dissolved to form aqueous ions so here the ions were in solid state but here the ions are in aqueous state all right so the amount of energy changes when an ionic solid turns into aqueous 
ions is what we are calling it as the solution enthalpy. Okay. Okay. Now to the next question uh, and uh, hydration. You must be very careful about the difference between solution and hydration. Look, hydration is dissolving the gaseous ions into water that means directly from the gaseous ions to the aqueous ions from the gaseous ions to the aqueous ions that is the hydration but when you are forming aqueous ions from solid state not gaseous from solid state of ions we call it solution enthalpy so from solid state of ion to aqueous state of ion is a sol it's the solution and from gaseous state of ion to the aqueous state of ion is the hydration okay okay now uh, so you know the definition of lattice and hydration okay so you must remember that lattice both uh, lattice and hydration they are energy lost or they are exothermic changes okay why let's see I'm sorry I'm taking tea at the same time okay so look when lattice is formed or a solid lattice is formed um, what happens is that uh, this is a positive ion this is a negative ion so they get to attract each other to form a strong electrostatic force of attraction forming an ionic solid that means energy is given out or energy must be given out okay uh, okay so this is a positive ion and this is a negative ion they were separated they had a lot of kinetic energy they were moving since they are gaseous ions but when they come together but when they come together they form a very strong attractive force between them that means uh, they, uh, they are now st stabilized and they lose their kinetic energy since they are now holding each other due to strong electrostatic force of attraction so energy must be lost okay so the amount of energy lost in this case when gaseous ions come together to form solid state of ions or ionic solid then we call it the um, lattice energy okay so it's all about uh, attractive force between the gaseous ions now what is uh, hydration hydration look at the definition of hydration here let me take a sip of tea uh, I'm hydrating myself okay so hydration enthalpy involves I just covered it right involves attractive force formation between the ions and the water molecules so in hydration enthalpy the attractive force is formed between the ions and the water molecules so again here attractive force is formed the ions would lose their uh, movement energy that means kinetic energy since they are attracted by the water molecules that means again the energy is lost in this case so um, here uh, this so uh, hydration energy or enthalpy is also attractive force dependent okay look for example i have given a reaction here it is copper 2 plus and n molecules of water that means around the copper ion n molecules of water are gathering and n can be any number it can be one uh, it can be three four five six etc or uh, n can be any number between one to six okay n because uh, when six water molecule gathers then there is actually no more space left for new water molecules to reach that place okay so 
uh, this actually means that copper ion is separated, water molecules are separated, but when they are getting uh, together, then n number of water molecules gather around copper, okay, n number of water molecules gather around copper forming, this is what we are writing as CuH2On, okay, 2 plus. So, when um, water molecules gather around copper ions forming uh, hydrated copper ion, then the amount of energy lost because uh, the attractive force is formed between the ion and the water molecule, the amount of energy lost will be called as the hydration enthalpy or hydration energy. Okay. Here is just uh, two example diagrams given. Look, here in this case, uh, six water molecules has gathered around copper ion and again six water molecules has gathered around the uh, chloride ion but look at the difference. This uh, blue terminals we are representing as the oxygen. Okay, so they are the oxygen. Oxygen. So you know, oxygen forms negative charge or slightly negative charge in compared to the hydrogen, isn't it? This uh, ash-colored circles are hydrogen. Okay. So, here the electrostatic force of attraction is formed between the oxygen terminals uh, and the copper ion because copper is positive and the oxygen is negative. So, electrostatic force of attraction is formed between the copper positive copper ion and the negative ox or slightly negative oxygen terminals. In case of chlorine, the opposite thing has happened since chlorine a has a negative charge so it it will form attractive force with the positive terminals of the water molecule the positive terminals are the hydrogen terminals okay all right so the amount of hydration or the amount the uh, the value of hydration enthalpy or the value of lattice enthalpy depends on the attractive force strength of the attractive force. If the attractive force is greater, then the particles or the ions would lose more of their kinetic energy. That means, the hydration and the lattice will both be greater. Okay. So, here we go. The variations in the hydration enthalpies of the ions uh, and this rule is actually the same as that of the lattice enthalpy. Okay, it should be concerned from here. Look, the strength of the attractive force is proportional to the charge density, which is simply the ratio of the charge to the size of the ion or the surface area of the ion. Now, this is the actual formula which you do not need to know. But uh, for simplicity, you may also think it in this way that charge density is proportional to charge divided by the radius of the ion, okay? Or uh, according to laws of physics, you can also say the force of attraction, you can say directly uh, the force of attraction is equals to the product of charges multiplied by their distance added square. Okay, but I do not uh, prefer this in case of chemistry. I prefer that you learn the formula of the charge density. The charge density is equal to charge divided by the surface area of the charged particle. And this is very important. This line is very important that force of attraction is directly proportional to the charge density. That means, the more the charge density, the higher will be its force of attraction or attracting power. Okay, okay, okay. So, the variation in hydration enthalpies. Okay, you know that uh, hydration enthalpy is the formation of attractive force 
between uh, water molecules and the ions. Okay. So, let us move here. Look, for example, you are taking a very small ion having a single positive charge and a larger ion having a single positive charge. So, this ion has got an air and uh, a surface area which is smaller or a smaller size, but this ion has got a surface area which is larger, is not it? So, this ion has a um, so, this ion has a high charge density that means, this ion can form a strong attractive force with the water molecules all right and this ion has got uh, the greater area that means, this ion has got a lower charge density. Why? Because uh, I think you remember the formula I have shown just a few moments ago the charge density is equal to charge divided by the area surface area okay so if surface area increases the charge density would decrease and the force of attraction is directly proportional to the charge density okay so um, okay this ion has got a large surface area so it has got lower charge density and lower charge density means it has the lower uh, force of attraction on the water molecules okay and here this ion has got a smaller area and a smaller area means higher charge density so this ion can attract so this ion can attract the water molecule quite strongly that means this has a large hydration energy okay Now, let us move on to a simple relation between the solution enthalpy, the hydration enthalpy and the lattice enthalpy. Now, okay, uh, look at the diagram here. Uh, I am trying to zoom it. Okay. So, when gaseous ions are turning into solid, some sort of ionic solid, then the energy change we are calling it as the lattice enthalpy, is not it? And when the ionic solids are turning to aqueous ions, then the energy change we are calling it as the solution enthalpy, the ionic solid to aqueous ion. <laughs> but when gaseous ions, but uh, if the gaseous ions are dissolved straight into water to form the aqueous ion, then what we are calling it is, is the hydration enthalpy. Okay? So, the pathway from here to here, the starting is, look here, the starting is the gaseous ion and the ending is the aqueous ion, maybe the direct process or the stepwise process. So, according to Hess's law, what is the rule? If the starting and the ending point of, of uh, a reaction is the same, then the enthalpy change would always be the same no matter whether a reaction occurs through one step, whether a reaction occurs through one step or the reaction occurs through multiple step, the enthalpy change would all be the same. Okay? So, what can we say? We can say that hydration enthalpy will be equal to the sum of lattice enthalpy and solution enthalpy. Okay? So, hydration enthalpy is the sum of uh, lattice enth enthalpy and solution enthalpy and solution enthalpy will be equal to hydration minus lattice. Okay? Uh, so, suddenly why are we learning the link between solution, hydration and lattice? Okay? that might be a very good question. So, um, uh, okay. Oh, I forgot that I am taking live class. Okay, who is online? Okay, Mimosa is online. Yes, okay. Yes, look at this slide. Thanks for your concern look at this slide. Anybody no more online? 
no S students of batch 1 and 2, only 5 students from batch 3, okay, okay. So, okay, so uh, delayed solution and delayed sol uh, solubility, delayed solution is the solution enthalpy and, so and solubility means how much of the solid you can dissolve in water, okay. So, in a, uh, in a certain amount of water, if you can dissolve a large amount of solid, that means the solubility of that ionic compound is high, okay. Now, look at the relation. So, if the solution enthalpy, okay, so this is the 0. So, if the solution enthalpy has negative values or it is negative, then the, uh, then the solubility values are high. Now, as the solution enthalpy becomes more and more positive, the solubility starts to decrease. Okay? So, if the solution enthalpy uh, numerically increases or uh, if, the solution, uh, um, if the value of the solution enthalpy begins to increase, that means it uh, starts to become less negative or more positive, then the solubility decreases. Okay? And so, if solution enthalpy value increases, then solubility decreases and if solution enthalpy value uh, decreases, then solubility what increases. Okay? So, this is the relation. Uh, you may argue that why is this relation. Okay? Now, you know that uh, just uh, for, for an instant think that um okay for example i'm talking about sodium chloride uh all right no okay look for example this is uh, sodium ion and this okay no this is a magnesium ion I mean the black one is a magnesium ion having a charge of uh, plus 2 and the red one is an oxide ion having a charge of minus 2 all right so you might so there will be very strong electrostatic force of attraction between them okay so there will be strong electrostatic force of attraction between them and when this attractive for, for force is formed the energy that is given out is called the lattice energy for instance think that 60 joule of energy is given out okay why I'm writing minus because this is the energy given out okay so what you have to do if you want to break this attractive force you have to give in the same amount of energy right so 60 so plus 60 so why I'm writing plus because you are giving in this amount of energy okay you are giving in this amount of energy so the lattice energy was minus 60 so you you have to give the energy plus 60 because lattice energy means energy is given out okay okay so now um, if for instance um, now suppose no sorry suppose now when you have applied the energy 60 joules when you have applied this amount of energy the ion has become separated and they are dissolved in water okay all right like this so this is plus 2 and this is minus 2 so they are now forming okay I'm just drawing a single water molecule over here okay 
this is hydrogen, this is hydrogen and another water molecule over here. Okay. This is hydrogen, this is hydrogen. So, what would happen is that with the positive ion, with the positive ion, the oxygen terminal would form an attractive force because it is negative. Okay. Okay. And with the negative ion, the hydrogen terminals would form the attractive force. Okay. Like this. Okay. Now, think for an instance that. Uh, who is there? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I was just being distracted. Okay. Uh, okay. So, look, for instance, just think that the total or overall attractive force between the ions and the water molecules, okay. So, this attractive force here, I am calling it as F1 and here I am calling it as F2. Okay, So, this is F2, this is also F2 and the attractive force between the two ions, I am calling it as F0. Okay, Now, if this is the case that F0, that means the attractive force between the ions themselves is much less than F1 plus F2 plus F2, that means the attractive force with the water molecules would be greater than the attractive force, the attractive force of the ions with the water molecules here would is greater, isn't it? It is greater than the attractive force between the ions themselves. Okay? So, what would happen? Now, you tell me which in which state would preferably the ions want to stay? Is it in this state or in this state? Obviously, your answer must be that the ions would prefer to stay in this state. Why? Because here the attractive forces are much more stronger, isn't it? Okay, so that would be the case. So now here we now get to know that the ions would prefer to stay in aqueous form. Okay, so here these uh, these attractive forces that F one F2, they are greater than the attractive force in their lattice form. So, what would happen is that uh, we can si uh, simply conclude that stronger attractive force is formed when they are in aqueous form in this case. All right. So, uh, you have given in 60 joule of energy. Uh, which was actually the opposite of lattice, exact opposite of lattice. So, but when the attractive force are formed with the water molecules, for example, the energy given out, maybe for example, considered it's 60, 60, 60. So there are they all have negative values. So all are negative 60. Okay. So, energy taken in, energy taken in is positive 60, okay. Energy taken in is positive 60 and energy given out is what? Is minus 180. So, which one is more? The energy given out is more, okay. So, that means the solution enthalpy, if you talk about solution enthalpy, delta H s, um, it would be lattice energy minus hydration, because total hydration is 180, so it is negative minus 120. So, solution enthalpy is negative and look at here that the ions, the positive and the negative ion would prefer to stay 
in aqueous form or dissolved form. Why? Because the attractive forces are greater. So, that means this solid would be very much soluble okay? and, and the solid is very much soluble and look at the solution enthalpy, it is negative. That means, if the solution enthalpy has negative value, then the solid would be very soluble. Okay? So, that is why we have that graph. Okay? Okay, who has joined with me again? Uh, okay, Anis has joined with me. Okay. Uh, okay, all right. So that's why this is the case that uh, if uh, solution enthalpy has got negative values, then solubility would be more. Okay because negative solution enthalpy means that uh, there is more hydration or a more stronger hydration that means the ions would prefer to stay in hydration form okay or hydrated form okay now about ion polarization and thermal stability first let me tell you what is ion polarization now ion polarization is nothing but the deformation or uh, the, uh, the changing the shape or deforming the shape of an ion by applying some force on it. Okay? For instance, uh, look at here that this ion, this ion is a perfect spherical shape, the carbonate ion okay? is the carbonate ion CO3 2 minus, but this ion, but this carbonate ion is distorted it is not spherical shape rather than it is like a balloon shape okay so the shape of the ion is distorted here uh, so that means uh, this ion we we are calling it as the polarized ion okay polarized ion this is unpolarized ion okay so look Since this is a polarized ion and there is on the uh, oxygen negative oxygen terminals, so these covalent bonds that means these bond around here and these bond around here, these covalent bonds must have become weakened, isn't it? Because you are applying force on the oxygen, uh, oxygen negative oxygen terminals that has that will make this bond weaker all right okay so these bonds are now easy to break look when you are applying force on this bond so the shape of the ion will become distorted and the bonds will become weak and look by just applying one kilojoule of heat the ion is broken down into co2 and oxide ion Okay, but when the ion is not distorted, when the ion is not distorted, the bond will remain in a stronger form and it would require a lot of heat to break this ion, okay, to form the same product. So, if the if an ion is polarized, then it is very easy to break that ion by applying heat that means the polarized ion is less thermally stable uh, polarized ions are less thermally stable look only small amount of heat has broken down this ion but unpolarized ions are very much thermally stable okay lot of it is required to break the ion okay just make a comparison by yourself you may uh, uh, I would suggest you to pause the video and find a comparison. Okay. Now, a very important thing that how does charge density affects all these things like solution, hydration, um, ion polarization. Okay. So, uh, just imagine that charge density you, re you rem uh, remember that charge density is equal to charge divided by the area or the size of the ion okay 
So, the more the charge density, the higher will be the attraction between the charges. Okay. So, uh, this is very important. Okay. The smaller the value, smaller value of lattice or hydration enthalpies are affected to a large extent by slight changes in charge densities. That means, if that means if the value of lattice energy if the value of lattice energy is small or if the value okay lattice energy is small or if the value of hydration is small then these values will be affected to a large extent to a large extent by the um, uh, changes in charge densities. Okay. Let me tell you for instance, for example, the lattice energy is uh, minus 60 okay. and the changes in charge density is say it is about 2. Uh, 2 ok. So, what is the final? It is minus 62 ok. No, the change in charge density is minus 20. So, the final lattice is minus 80 ok. So, tell me uh, what is the change? Change is 20, the initial is 60. So, what is the percentage of change? 20 by 60 into 100 percent that means it is a change of 33 percent ok. But think that the lattice energy was 6000 joule ok 6000 joule and the change is still 20. So, the final is 60 20. So, what is the percentage of the change? It is 20 by 6000 into 100 percent which means the change is uh, 0 0.33 percent ok. So, now I think you have got to know the difference here the change is 33 percent, but here the change is 0 0.33 percent 33 and 0 0.33 here is a very large change and here is a very much small change ok. So, if the value of lattice or lattice or hydration is small then the change imposed over them will have a, a change imposed over them will have a big, big effect, but if the la value of lattice or hydration is large then the change imposed over them is large then the change imposed over them will have a very little or no effect at all ok. Look here it is a 33 percent change and here it is a 0 0.33 percent change ok. So, bigger value of lattice or hydration means they are less affected or affected to a very small extent and a smaller value of lattice or a smaller value of hydration like this in this case means they will be affected to a large extent by any kind of change. Okay, so now let us go back to our slide. Okay, so um, here the this uh, comparative value of uh, solution and hydration affects the solubilities to a large extent. Okay, okay so uh, what happens? Uh, now, for example, I want to tell you the solubilities of uh, um, uh, solubilities of group uh, 2 compounds down the group. Uh, it may include for example, the solubility of uh, all the sulphates, okay. solubility of the nitrates solubility of the hydroxides, solubility of the chlorides, sol sorry, 
solubility of the chlorides, solubility of the fluorides. Okay, all right. Now let's go to some explanations. Okay. Now let's talk about the uh, sulfates. Okay, sulfates and nitrates. They all have got the same explanations. Although, look, the sulfate. Let me give some comparative studies so that that would be easier for you. So sulfate and hydroxide. Tell me the mass of sulfate. It's thirty-two plus sixty-four. That means it's about ninety-six. Isn't it 32 plus 64? Yes, 96. And this has got a mass of just 17. So, which ion is bigger? Which ion has a greater surface area? Obviously, your answer must be sulfate. Okay? So, this sulfate has a very large surface area. So, what about the charge density around this sulfate ion? Is it low or high? Obviously, the charge density is very low because of its size. Now, tell me about the hydroxide. Its size is very small, so its charge density must be large. Okay, and you should remember that the attractive force is directly proportional to the charge density. Okay, so sulfate has got a smaller charge density. So, uh, it can exert a small attractive force uh, with the lattice and, uh, and also with the, uh, so, sorry, it can exert a small attractive force mainly with the water, okay, mainly with water, okay. And hydroxide, hydroxide this has got a very large charge density. So, hydroxide can attract water molecules very strongly, very, 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 very strongly. That means, the uh, hydration of the hydration enthalpy of hydroxide is very large because it can exert a very strong attractive force on the water molecule. But sulfate, its, its charge density is low. So, it can exert a very small attractive force on the water molecules. Okay. Now, let us go what has like um, down the group. Okay. Look, uh, I will show you a part of the book. Look, here you are stated the changes in hydration enthalpy down the group. So, down the group, the down the group, the size of the ions increase. So, there is a decrease in the hydration enthalpy and also there is a decrease in the lattice enthalpy down the group. Okay? All right. Now, we have to find a significant change that which change is more significant. Okay. For instance, think of, uh, let me tell you uh, about magnesium and sulphate and think about barium and sulphate. Okay? Look here, sulphate ion is the constant. Okay. Sulphate ion is constant. Okay. So, I have to draw it again. My fate. magnesium sulfate and barium sulfate okay okay no uh, no anis i won't tell you that which software i'm using i'm sorry okay so what uh, here uh, the sulfate ion is constant okay so, let us speak about the properties of sulphate. So, sorry, oops. So, this sulphate, sulphate has 
got hydration energy lower ok. Uh, so, it is hydration energy is less. So, uh, uh, its power of attraction its lattice energy is its lattice energy is also less ok. That means, it is the attracting power of another ion is less ok. Now, let us talk about magnesium and barium uh, uh, all throw down the group this will remain constant. Now, we have to look at the positive ions ok. So, if we talk about magnesium, magnesium has got a smaller size since its uh, position is at the top of the group. So, its hydration is large ok. So, uh, the hydration enthalpy of magnesium is large, but lattice its lattice that means the power of attraction of uh, uh, on another ion is also large ok. Uh, here now hydration less and lattice is also less here barium ok. So, talking about barium its uh, hydration enthalpy is less because it is also larger in size very large in size and its lattice lattice enthalpy is also less. Now, so uh, let us predict the solubilities from these data of magnesium sulphate and barium sulphate ok. So, what happens is that um, ok look now tell me which interaction has got uh, which interaction deals with uh, I mean uh, which energy or which in enthalpy change deals with a lot of interactions. Obviously, the hydration is not it obviously, the hydration in this case. So, we have to focus on the hydration. Um, um, ok, let us forget about interaction. So, lattice energy is the overall, overall attractive force between two ions is not it. So, instead of considering that each ion has lattice attraction, when we are talking about lattice we should we should consider two ions together ok. So, here look at least magnesium is small. So, the at so the lattice energy would be large here, but lattice energy would be smaller here. So, there is a gradual change in lattice energy. So, here the lattice energy was high and here the lattice energy was low. So, uh, lattice energy is high and low. So, it is changing ok. So, we cannot decide from the lattice energy because some, uh, in this case it was high and in this case it was low ok. But uh, then we have one option left which is the hydration ok. So, at the start the hydration was originally less ok of the sulphate. Maybe magnesium has got a higher hydration, but sulphate has got a lower hydration and lattice energy I am telling it again I am just cutting off these things. So, this might make you confused I am just cutting off these things because la uh, lattice energy depends on uh, the attraction of uh, in lattice energy de depends on both the ions. So, here the lattice energy would be high because the attraction is higher because magnesium has got a smaller size ok. But hydration is the depends on individual ions. So, sulphate uh, would dissolve in water, but the hydration energy would be low and magnesium the hydration energy would be high ok. So, from magnesium to barium again the hydration energy is decreasing, but 
the overall hydration energy from the start was already lower. Why? Because the sulphate, the sulphate ion has got a lower hydration energy. So, overall, uh, so in all cases, the hydration energy um, uh, would have got a lower value. So, since the hydration energy of the sulphate is already low, let me clear it, magnesium sulphate, barium sulphate. So, since the hydration energy of the sulphate is already low, all right. So, any change in the hydration energy of these positive ions would cause a major change on the hydration on the overall hydration of the ionic compound, is not it? Because the hydration energy of sulphate is already low. So, if there is any change in the hydration energy of these positive ions that would create a major or drastic change on the hydration energies down the group of the overall ionic compound. Okay? So, down the group since the size of the positive ions increase that means the hydration energy decrease, but the percentage of decrease is very much large than the percentage decrease of the lattice energy. Okay? So, actually lattice energy depends on the on um, this attraction between both ions. So, in all cases we would not uh, bother to consider the change of lattice energy, we would always consider the or compare the changes of hydration energy. So, okay, so down the group in this in the case of sulphate, lattice energy also decreases, hydration energy also decreases, but hydration energy would decrease more because the sulphate ion has already small hydration or it uh, gives us only small hydration energy. So, any change in the hydration energy, uh, any change in the hydration energy of uh, of these positive ions would create would cause a major change in overall hydration energy. Okay, so down the group, what happens? Down the group, what happens is that uh, hydration uh, lattice energy de decreases because the size of ion increases, charge density decreases. Hydration also decreases, but hydration decreases more than lattice. Okay, so for instance, look. Um, in one case, consider that lattice was minus sixty, and uh, hydration was like. Oops, I think I am doing a mistake. Del H solution is equals to hydration minus lattice. Okay, for example, in one case, hydration is minus sixty, and lattice is minus thirty. Okay, and down the group, 